Yo yo yo, Casey here, and welcome to part 2 of making the track from scratch series. So in this video we're actually gonna get into it, we're gonna start making the track. So um, be sure to uh, follow the playlist down below in the description so that way you can watch all these in order, that way these videos make more sense to you. And also, you know, you can always click up here in this little circle and that should also just find, uh, help you find the playlist. So uh, let's get started. Alright, so we're back in Ableton and you know, usually you can approach a track when you're making it either from like making a progression right away or making your drum section first. I kind of prefer making drums first so that way it's kind of easier to put and you kind of listen to something when making a reference. So I feel like it's always harder to make your chords and then find drums that fit that. It, that's a bit harder, but you know, you can do it either way. It really doesn't matter. Let's swap out our kick. So let's let that be the first thing we do. So when I have something already set up like this, or like a sample like like a kick or a clap that I want to replace, I just go File Manager, and I go to Manage Set, View Files, and then I just use the hot swap there. So uh, let's just audition some kicks. All right, so I like that one. So we're just gonna stick with that one and. Uh, let's keep building this. So the next thing I normally do is uh, I go to a drum rack that I've saved before called a noise rack and it's basically like where I put all my effects and all that kind of stuff. So it's like impacts, uplifters, downlifters, atmospheres, everything I could possibly need. So that way I don't have to have like 30 tracks of effects and I can just have it all in one spot. So it'd probably be easier if you for you to just see uh, like what I'm talking about. So if we look at the MIDI roll, uh, we could just see a whole bunch of samples in here. So it's pretty easy just to like turn on the preview and then just listen for the ones you like and then kind of just add it all up. So it's obviously super loud. So we should bring this down to 12 dB. So in the last video I talked about gain structure and so my kick since it's gonna be the last thing in the track that's 9 dB down everything gets mixed in lower than that so we're gonna put this at like 12 or 15 dB and that should start to kind of put our mix like so we at least have a rough mix by the end of this uh, let's keep playing around with some more of these let's find the right one Alright, so we got that. So let's continue on now and let's add some audio tracks. Um, yeah, let's get some audio tracks and let's. Uh, these are already negative 12 dB down, so when I. Uh, the reason why that is is because I save these as my default audio tracks so that they're just mixed 12 dB down so it won't be louder than my kick depending on the sample. So let's find now like some cymbals and stuff. Let's get some of that kind of stuff going on. So. I have a lot of sample packs. I buy sample packs every week. Um, you know, I hoard samples like the same way people hoard boxes and cats and stuff. I hoard samples in my computer. It's just something I like to do. It's just, you know, there's always a point in my week where I'm like, mm, I don't have enough samples, even though that's far from true. So let's find like some, uh, actually there's a pack here that I bought not too long ago that has some top loops in, in key. So that's pretty useful. Um, so we'll go with the main ones here, Electri uh, Electro Progressive Tops, and let's see, we're in D major, so we just need to find something in the key of D. So let's see how these are. It's not even in my key, but it's close enough that I could also transpose it. So, you know, also I just look for ones that sound good and I can just transpose it from there. But let's see, let's go back into uh, another folder of these. So maybe not these ones. Let's go into the minimal. Let's find one here. So 
So I don't really like deleting things. Um, Ableton is actually pretty useful when you use the zero key. Um, it doesn't have to be on number pad or anything. Um, zero just deactivates a clip like that. Works for MIDI, works for plugins, works for a lot of things. It's uh, just deactivating it. So as opposed to deleting it and you know not having it later, it is just muted. But I think it's pretty safe to say I don't need this, so I will actually delete it. Just wanted to make that little demonstration. Now let's consolidate this because I hate having to select things like this when they're not in one clip. So let's press Control J. That would be Command J for Mac. So let's do this and let's listen to it. So we already got like our atmosphere type stuff going on. I think uh, we have some impacts that sound very atmospheric. So like the Umix space boom and things like that. We can add atmospheres to this. So the thing I like about this noise rack is that I can always expand and just throw in more samples. So, you know, because I get sample packs every week, um, I leave a lot of these kind of like drum racks kind of empty so that I have some room to throw in new stuff. So it's just a great way to manage your effects, I think. So let's get maybe uh, some claps and some more crashes to be on every beat of the uh, kick. So that way we have like a progressive intro type feel. So let's look for some snares or some symbols. So uh, I'm just gonna see which one I find first. So I'm already looking for a crash because uh, that's just the first sample pack that I saw that I use. So this pack right here is just like all symbols like crashes, rides, impacts of crashes and hi-hats and it's not loops, it's just individual stuff. And this always comes in handy, so. Let's go to the real crashes. I actually know that I'm going to use this one, so I'm not even going to pretend like I'm going to audition those. I know which one in this pack I like to use. This one. So let's uh, bring it down here. Bring it to... Uh, it's okay if it's at 12 dB. So it's going to be pretty loud, but it's going to fit. And let's bring out the fades, not because we I want to adjust the beginning fade. Uh, Ableton, when you bring in short samples, adds a short fade. Not good for kicks, so you have to definitely check that and pull this back. But because this is a symbol and it's playing on every beat of the kick, um, I really don't care about that beginning fade. I just want to maybe make this shorter. So, you know, at least something like that. We'll listen to it. So let's just get a loop going on here and let's mute these things out and let's listen. So, yeah, I'm just trying to find something that's, you know, makes the kick sound a little bit more longer. It's really just there to complement the kick um, and not to stand out as a crash. So let's just duplicate this over and over and over. And let me just select this again. So we're just going for the first eight bars. So let's probably now duplicate this. I know what you're thinking. Why would you want two of those? And I'll show you why. So we're going to... Just select all this. All right, let me see if uh, file manager won't fuck this up. So because we have two of these tracks, I'm afraid that one of these. Oh, I know what I could do. If I consolidate the top one into one audio, then I replace it. It should be okay. So let's just blah blah blah. So let's find where this is. So the crash impact, uh, this should be crash impact two. Since there should be, okay, so this is one, one. Let's find it. And trust me, this is actually gonna save me some time. So this is it right here. Let's find some claps. So let's go into samples. Let's keep going back here and let's try another pack. So. The good thing about buying so many sample packs is like, I am not short of any kind of samples. So let's look in some claps. And now that I've like hot swapped it out, let's just play it now. So now let's audition different ones. Alright, so I found one that I do kind of like, 
So I'm thinking because I spent like a, a minute or two there, I'm just going to cut out to the end of this. And when I cut things out like that, it's just because really I wasn't, there wasn't anything that interesting going on. I'm, I really don't want you guys watching me go through samples for like two whole minutes. So uh, let's see, I think we muted all this out because we were listening to something. So let's kind of hear what we have all together now. All right, so we have, you know, very basic elements that we need. So I'm thinking, you know, because we kind of have everything we need, let's just add another top loop to this and call it a day on this. So let's actually listen to some of these. Yeah, that's nice. So um, I think that's everything I wanted to show you guys in this video. I know this is kind of boring, just me putting samples and stuff together. Um, but you know, this is really the most boring part of any track or, or any production, just putting together your samples and stuff. And you know, my tracks is like 20% samples, 80% like sound design and synths and all that. So um, you know, for me, this is like the most boring part as well because I like creating stuff. So this is like, um, you know, this feels a bit cheap and tedious. So that being said, the playlist is down below. Watch these in order so it makes sense to you guys. Um, should have two more videos out in a day or two or tomorrow, whenever. So I'm going to try to put these out really fast, get this series done fast. And thanks guys for watching and of course, later.